Classic Rock is very happy to, um, to add the down and outs to the lineup of high voltage. Um, how do you feel about it? Uh, I'm ecstatic. I'm so glad we're out, out, able to do this. It makes total sense to me as well because we, you know, we cover them out in um, a version of the album um, a month before the gig, you know. So I just saw this as a great opportunity, you know. I mean, when you've been in the business as long as, as we have, you 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 just know certain things. You think, okay, there's potentially ninety, hundred thousand people going to own a copy, a ten-track version of the album a month before the gig. It doesn't make any sense not to play it, you know. Once we were invited to do it, thinking, if half the people that buy the magazine play the record, there's fifty thousand people. If half of them like it, there's twenty-five, and if half of them go to the gig, there's seven. You know, there's there's twelve and a half thousand people actually know the words and know the songs, and these are songs that mean so much to me growing up. That it'd be, you know, it, I just it just shows a wonderful opportunity. I always look at things with the glass half full. It's like all the stuff I just mentioned might not happen. But um, I have to think that it will, because otherwise you might as well just roll over and die, you know. Um, so it's, it's a wonderful thing that we get the chance to do this. The way I look at it, and I know you're a fan of, 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 of the songs. A lot of these songs, we all wish other people had heard them, many fold. You know, they should have been hits. A lot of these songs should have been hit. England Rock should have been hit. Hundreds of people should know Shouting and Pointing as well as they know Kashmir. Thousands, millions of people should. And they don't, so this is a great opportunity to try and, you know, springboard some of these old classics back into people's DNA, you know. To a lot of people, this will be like a brand new record because they won't have heard them before. And um, other than the fact that we have to tell by law, we have to tell everybody who wrote them. It would, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if some people come to me saying, I love that song you wrote, shouting and pointing, you know. Um, they're just great songs that I just really thought needed hearing again. So. The only way it's really going to happen is if somebody else recorded it. What feedback have you had from the composers? Really positive, actually. Um, over in Watts, nearly cried when he heard us doing them at Hammersmith. Um, there's a great quote, uh, <laughs> Ian, get them off, they're going down too well. <laughs> um, I sent uh, I sent him a, um, an MP3 of England Rocks and he, th he just came back with, oh, very spiffy, you know. Um, Fiddler loves One More Chance to Roll. He, he says, wow, he says, you guys really sound like you're having a good time, unlike what's recorded. <laughs> you know, and uh, Morgan Fish has been very supportive all the way through this. You know, I sent him a few emails as we were recording stuff going, is this how it goes? Because some of this stuff's like really complicated. And it's like, well, you might as well ask the masters. And they wrote this stuff. So, you know, what do we do on this bit? And he was... All the way from Japan, emailing me back, going, "Well, it goes like this," and you know, so it's been pretty positive so far. Um, obviously, people don't really appreciate what it's like to be a performer at these events, but um, you know, if you get the time, who, who would you be trying to look out for at high voltage? Well, this might sound a little strange, but you know, when I was ten or eleven, I was the youngest kid on our block by about four years, so I was absolutely browbeaten with ELP. And if they play Take a Pebble and Knife Edge, I'll be watching. Um, not so much Love Beach, sorry guys, but um, the early stuff, yeah, you know. Um, Backman Turner, obviously. Joe Bonamassa is a mate of mine, so I'm going to be watching him. Um, and, you know, UFO, it goes without saying, they were a huge influence on Leopard in the early days, so. Um, I don't think Pete Way's in the band at the moment, is he, sadly? Uh, I shall miss Pete, but it'd be good to see, you know, hear Phil singing the songs again. Um, they were always a huge influence on Leopard. We've always worn our art on our sleeve and never denied it. You know, they, you, especially on the first album, you can actually hear lifted chunks of certain songs of theirs put into some of ours, you know. So there's no point in trying to deny the fact that they were a massive influence. Between them and Thin Lizzy, they were the two biggest influences on us when we first formed. I mean, it's a very impressive bill at high voltage. Isn't and let's it? not forget, by the way, sorry, the choir boys. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, it, it always goes through my mind. I have to be very careful about what happens here because I don't ever want Spike to be in a position where he thinks, I'm changing the dynamics here with those guys. This is an absolute, when they're available, they're available. When they're not, I'm not going to stop. You know, it's the choir boys, and that's their thing. And this is just something that we do 
when say Spike's doing a solo record and the other guys are sitting around doing nothing, if I'm available, we'll get together and do this kind of thing. So it's just a beautiful thing that we can actually both be on the bill at the same time. Obviously you've played most of the big festivals in the world by now. Do you think it's a good thing that there's a, you know, a festival for kind of older rock fans? Oh, yeah, absolutely, of course I would. I'm 50 years old myself. And there comes a point where you go, you know, it's okay to go down a download. And download was great when we played it last year. I mean, it doesn't get any better than headline in the last night which was a classic rock night really and it was the biggest it's the most attended of the three nights which is always a bit of a to everybody that says it's not going to be you know um there's abs rock music doesn't have this logan's run thing anymore where you're dead at 32. you know even at 50 i'm clapton's still out there doing it you know cream reformed and played it mott just reformed you know there was zeppelin nearly reformed this this is the, because of the way that the music business has gone, the older guys, the McCartneys, the Gilmores, they're so much more important because they're the only ones that've got a legacy and everybody's hanging on to it. This is why they're always on the front cover of all the magazines, more so than Green Day, more so than My Chemical Romance, some fantastic bands who hopefully will get the chance to become what we've become. In other words, we got through the door before it was digitally slammed shut, you know. Um, I think, you know, it's not sad to have these kind of festivals. It's not like a Butlins thing. I mean, it's going to be a big do, you know, and I think people genuinely have come to the understanding that it doesn't matter about age, it matters about quality. And if you go to a classic rock festival, chances are you're going to know 90% of the material. Now, you might not like 90% of the material, but at least you'll know it. And that's half the, half the battle, is, is just having your music known by people. Talking of which, um, when you do to go back to the day job, can you just give us an insight? Yeah, this is, a, this is a, um, a genuine year off from touring for Leopard, but it's not a year off from work. I mean, we're on the phone with each other all the time, you know. We have lovely eye chats once a month at least, you know. Um, we're writing, we're preparing to release uh, live material. We've got DVD, live versions, and iTunes stuff all in the in the balance. We've got a, uh, a great project of old f photos of Ross Alfins. We're starting a collection of like maybe four or five volumes of different periods of the band. So we're working on the early years stuff um, for uh, maybe Christmas or so. Um, it'll be part of a, a set of six volumes released over maybe two, three years or whatever. Um, and, and like I said, you know, f moving forward in a positive way, writing new songs for a, for, for a new album. We're, we're actually out of our record deal, which is, in this day and age, it, it, there was a time where you, you weren't with a record label, you'd been dropped and it was a bad thing. It's actually turned the other way around. It's like the record company is the one that's been dropped and we've still got what we've got and we can go where we want with it. So, you know, we're going to make new music and we're going to release it on Bludgeon and Fola but it's not going to be via our old record label. It will be, which, which we still have a good relationship with them. In fairness, old stuff we will do specific things as and when they they need to be done. You know, it's 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 just onwards and upwards. You know, we've been around for 32 years. This is the first time we've ever taken a year off, and it, I don't think anybody can say that we don't deserve it. You know, um, just to do different things. And on my year off, I chose to make a record. <laughs> I'd go on, do this festival, you know, strange. Well, I can tell you're having a blast with the down and uh, Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you at... Uh, yeah, me too, it's going to be a lot of fun. Be there, or um, as they used to say in the old days, be square. <laughs>